Today's episode of The Bitcoin Show is brought to you by Mt. Gox and Thank You Economy Book and MemoryDealers.com. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to The Bitcoin Show. I'm Bruce Wagner, and uh, today we have uh, a really exciting day, actually. It's even more exciting. I know I say that every day, but it's even more exciting than normal because we have uh, some of that new state-of-the-art, cutting-edge Bitcoin software to talk about uh, that is now available. What I've been saying is going to be available, I said, within the next year, within the next six months, within the next three months. And uh, now the first generation of it is really here today. So today we're going to talk about um, new software called SafeBit. And my guests are Stefan Thomas and hey Ali Sklar, developers and founders of SafeBit. Hi, hey guys. How you doing? Uh, how are you? Hey. <laughs> good, good. So uh, Stefan's joining us from Switzerland. And Ali, where are you? I'm from Tel Aviv, Israel. From Tel Aviv. Okay, that's right, Israel. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we're very global, as always. And um, so tell us, okay, let's start from the beginning. For those of, of uh, you in the audience and me who don't know what's going on, SafeBit is a free open source software project. Is that right? Right. Okay. And um, who did the, the development, most of the development, or did you, do, did you share that equally or what? Um, I started developing it uh, almost uh, six months ago, uh, but now I'm starting to gather more developers uh, around me and getting some uh, investment in the project. Okay, and Stefan, you did you you de did you develop the server side of it? Exactly. So I was working on Bitcoin Jazz for about the same amount of time, and uh, we realized that you know Ali has a really amazing GUI, and uh, I have a server, and so we started. Uh, talking to each other a couple of weeks ago, and uh, now we're ready to make it official that uh, I'm going to be consulting with Ali and helping them, uh, you know, integrate their client with with our server. Awesome! All right, cool. So it's like a marriage made in heaven when you guys discovered the two pieces. I mean, when you started, I mean, obviously, Stefan, you started the server side of it prior. Is that right? Uh, I would say about the same time. About the same what time. Do you think Eli? Well, I think, okay. Yeah. Ellie, did you have Stefan's server side model in mind when you started? I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. When you started your client, did you already have Stefan's server side in mind? I mean, w like, was this developed synchronous, you know, no. synchronously, or did you not know where it was going to go? No, actually, when I started, I started with the official Bitcoin client, and uh, then I met uh, Stefan a couple of months later, and we started chatting and realized um, that would be a great partnership together. Oh, okay. Between so then things. when you met Stefan yeah. and, you, and you decided to, uh, to develop for his server, then did you have to like kind of start the client, start over a bit, on the, uh, or at least some of the under the hood mechanics to make it uh, compatible with Stefan's server side? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So tell us what what now the entire project on both sides is free open source software is that correct? Yep, it is. That's yeah. awesome. All right, and um, now what are the what are the key features and benefits of SafeBit as opposed to the standard Bitcoin client? Well, let me uh, start there. Um, so obviously, with um, our server, you don't need to download the blockchain up front, right? Um, so you can pretty much start the client and you can you can get going right away now One thing that I want to make absolutely clear to your viewers is that uh, we just uh, We're just announcing the cooperation right now So right now the client that you can download and try out uh, still relies on the original client so we're now starting to um, Move everything over so it actually integrates um, with my server and then you will get all of these features over the next couple of months rolling out Yep. okay, so the software that they would download you're saying it, re it relies on the standard Bitcoin client right now? Right. For now, yeah. So, I mean, is there a ser so there isn't a server-side aspect to it yet. Is that what you're saying? 
Right. Um, the current so version. What, what you can do is uh, you can uh, download it, and if you're running the original client already, you can integrate it with the RPC API, and you can try it out, and you can see um, the interface, which looks really amazing, and, and Ellie has done an amazing job, and that's uh, part of the reason why I was so excited to, to work with him, uh, because I think our server is pretty good, but we don't have a good uh, GUI for it. We don't have a good user interface, and I personally have absolutely no talent in uh, writing user interfaces. So I think this is where, where we can really work well together, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that uh, in a couple of months we can integrate the code that I've written and that Eli's uh, Eli's written, and we can put them together, and uh, I think the result will be pretty good. Um, one of the things that, that's, that fits very well is that both our software is written in JavaScript. So Ellie's written everything in JavaScript. I've written everything in JavaScript. So we have absolutely no uh, compatibility issues to bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, we can just literally take my code, put it in, uh, flip some switches, and uh, it should work. That's great. The, um, how did you guys meet? How did you two meet? Um, actually, through someone through the Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin talk, I think. Someone just threw me a word about uh, Bitcoin JS. I started uh, looking at it, and then uh, I think Thomas sent me uh, Stephen sent me an email, and from that it uh, we've done a small Skype uh, talk, mm -hmm. and started rolling from there. It's amazing right. how people can meet through the internet, and then they can actually start collaborating, and then they can it, work day to day I mean, through the internet. Have you ever met physically face to face? Uh, not yet. Uh, not oh yet. my gosh. The next Bitcoin conference, we'll have to have to do exactly. that for sure. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna be working on on scheduling that maybe the same time, like New York in in August or something like that again. But anyway, we'll talk about that. So now the, this okay. So the client, um, which is SafeBit, right? Is is that uh, will right. it run on any platform? Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, it's supposed to run on any platform, be it desktop, Linux, Mac, or Windows, or iPhone, or, or any smartphone, Android, iPad, or eventually even Google TV and Apple TV and stuff like that. Basically anything that supports HTML5. So, okay, so what you're saying, SafeBit is a web app. Right. Okay. But, yeah. but what? Uh, it's not just a web app. It's, um, with uh, Stefan's uh, Bitcoin JS, it has a lot more capabilities than just a uh, regular Bitcoin wallet or hosted wallet. Uh, we're doing something different in terms of uh, a hosted wallet. We're providing uh, some different features on that. Yep. Okay. So, um, all right. Now I'm seeing it. If you flip over to my screen there, and you can see, okay, this is in the uh, Google Chrome Store. You go chrome.google.com/webstore. Chrome.google.com slash webstore, and I think I searched for Bitcoin, and I found it safe bit. Uh, so it says five stars, seven ratings. <laughs> it's under productivity, and um, that's uh, here are some screenshots you can see. Um, all right, so this let's see what is that? Uh, the various different screenshots that show you transactions, some graphics, bar charts, send coins, receive coins, buy and sell. Um, you can actually buy and sell too. Does it integrate to exchange sites, or is that a feature coming? No, no. The, uh, currently, what you, what you see there is uh, basically mock-up. Uh, the current application has the send and receive Bitcoin. Um, mm -hmm. We're still uh, negotiating, looking for a partner to buy and sell Bitcoins uh, directly from Safebit. We're already partnered with Bitcoin in Israel, uh, but we're still uh, we're still searching for that in, in the global arena. Okay, I see in the in the screenshots you've got Mt. Gox buy bitcoins. That's an example, I guess. And then you've got yeah, receive but funds. We're not affiliated with not, not not with Mt. Gox and not with Amazon. Right. Okay. Yep. So the functionality of buy and sell bitcoins is not there yet, but the but send and receive bitcoins is. All right. So what this is, let me make sure I understand. So this is a it's a web app that you buy. What is it free in the in the Chrome Web Store? Yeah, right. it's free. So you don't buy it. Uh, save it as free, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna stay free. Mm -hmm. But you can use it once you install it through the Chrome Web Store, which is just a distribution channel, I guess, right? And you're yeah. not really installing it. I guess you're just kind of setting up an account to use it. Is that right? Right. It's, yeah. it's, it doesn't actually install code on your device, on your computer, or your phone. 
Uh, yes, it does. It, well, it, it pre-caches it, so you it starts up more quickly, and it's integrated with Chrome, and so you get a nice icon um, where you can start it right from the Chrome front page. Okay. So anything, any device that can run a Chrome browser, then you can you can use this in. Now, what what about um, Android? How how do, will it work for with Android, that? Android, we're developing um, on a local application. Probably it's going to be web application with uh, some kind of. Um, tied in somehow to the platform, but for now they're not supported on um, on mobile devices. For now, it's not but supported on mobile devices yet. So yeah, it's it's, pro it's probably it's probably a good idea to explain. I mean, the basic platform that we're using is JavaScript and HTML based, and the nice thing about that is that almost any platform, including mobile devices and smartphones, can run that. Right. So basically, once you've got your code running on one platform, you don't have to rewrite the whole thing again in Java and then in Objective C for iPhone and so on. Mm -hmm. But rather, you write it once, and then you change the UI based on the form factor. And then you're able to deploy it to all of these mobile devices. So, um, whereas I don't see you know anyone working on a BlackBerry app, for example, right now, or a WebOS app. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these devices run HTML5. So once we have sort of one uh, interface for the desktop and one interface that works on on the mobile form factor, we can pretty much deploy it, uh, it very easily to all of these different devices. And um, again, uh, what I really like about what SafeBit's done so far is just the the beautiful UI, and I, I'm hoping that together we can uh, put in all the engine and all the backend stuff that makes it work well, and, and all the features that you see in the mockups actually implemented, and uh, that's why I'm excited about it, and that's why I wanted to share it with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, yeah, the, the beautiful UI, and the, complete, the way it's developed is the, the completely universal cross-platform plan, so once it's all fine-tuned, it'll just automatically roll out on basically every platform. But the, that's not what excites me the most. What excites me the most is the, um, the back end of how the wallet is encrypted. So tell me about how the wallet is encrypted securely, where it's stored, and, and how it's backed up and things like that. Okay, so we talked about this um, at length yesterday. Uh, and the way we're planning it is uh, we want to implement several different um, versions or, or ways you can store and manage your wallet. Right. And um, so it goes from the basic wallet, which is stored on your device persistently, uh, just like the original client, and it would be encrypted with your password if you want um, or not. And you could use that for you know small amounts of bitcoins where you don't want a, a lot of pass on a lot of security overhead. And you can, of course, then go for the next step up. You want to um, back up your wallet as well, so you, you've got some kind of cloud storage, like your Google account, and your wallet just stored on there. Or um, you could store it encrypted. So there's a bunch of different options that you can actually um, go for uh, with, this, uh, with this model. Um, so, uh, and finally, of course, there's the, the latest stuff that Gavin and I are working on um, for the original client, and me through a, an algorithm for Bitcoin JS is um, split keys, where um, you have multiple devices, such as a server or, and a client, and they sort of split the keys up, and you need the permission of both. And then there you can then implement uh, all the security features that you use to from hosted wallets uh, without actually having to trust the server. And finally, as a fourth option, there's obviously hosted wallets themselves. Um, and I don't know if, uh, if Ali is planning to, um, to provide that service himself or if we're going to partner with someone else. but. Just based, uh, based on the client, we want to just make it a flexible architecture where you can have all of these different wallet types um, all together, and then based on your use case, you can pick what you want and, and use your coins the way you want to. Okay. So yeah. the, uh, now in the state right now, is, this is a, it says preview version. This is an alpha release. Um, in, the, in its current state, how does it work? It, it actually stores the wallet. It encrypts the wallet from the beginning, right? And then is the wallet stored locally on the device? No, no, it actually uses the official Bitcoin wallet. So whether you're downloading the new Bitcoin wallet that uh, uses encryption or you're downloading uh, the old one that doesn't have uh, built-in encryption, uh, basically uses that. It connects to uh, the, the official Bitcoin wallet or any other Bitcoin wallet that supports uh, JSON RPC and basically creates a GUI overlay on that. Uh -huh. uh, for now, it's just, uh, just a nice UI on top of the or you can have a Bitcoin client, um, nothing more. It's just, again, it's a preview version. Right. It's not a, the, you know, the final 
Okay. So okay. Uh, that's some work to do. And the funny, the funny part is that uh, what I have basically is I have all the the libraries, the JavaScript, the signature stuff. I have the server, and I don't have a proper UI, <laughs> right? So <laughs> that's that's when Ali came to me and he's like, uh, uh, you know, I saw the stuff that you're working on. It's kind of interesting, and I realized that you know we pretty much have like the two halves that you need to make yeah. a good client. And so hopefully sounds like a marriage made in heaven. <laughs> It was amazing. Basically, uh, I don't know how Stefan did it, but what he did with Bitcoin JS is just amazing. Uh, the work that put in uh, that went in there, could have see. Wow, amazing. Okay, perfect. And it sounds like you both <laughs> had the, the the two matching keys that just fit each other perfectly. So yeah, we have a lot of respect for each other, and uh, I think uh, at least in Ellie's case, it's definitely earned. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like it's mutual. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the um, all right now, um, the ultimate plan is that it will have its own wallet that it will be separate from the standard Bitcoin uh, client wallet, right? And it will be always encrypted. And then mm -hmm. the idea is that that encrypted wallet will also be automatically stored and uh, backed up at least a copy of it on the server side. Is that right? Right. So if you go with the with the absolute maximum security available, then you would have um, a split key set up. You would have part of your key on your device, part of your key on the server. Um, the server would use an extra verification system, you know, like uh, sending you an SMS for whenever you want to do a transaction or something like that. Mm -hmm. And both types of keys or both parts of the key will be backed up separately. And so um, get a tremendous amount of security, far beyond what you would get even at a bank today. So this is, um, this is really exciting. That's only possible with Bitcoin. And um, uh, basically what we need for that is um, a, a new opcode that's being introduced in the Bitcoin network. And that's what Gavin's working on uh, at the moment, which is called OpEval. And the plan right now is for that to land um, in, the origin, in, in the official client um, by February. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't know if that, that time scale will work out because it sounds pretty tight. But uh, um, if it is, then hopefully we're going to be ready in February to use it right when it comes out and when it launches on the on the network. Right. Okay. So okay. Now um, that's pretty technical. But uh, see if I follow. the 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 bottom line then is once that's finished, once that's implemented, um, if I have uh, if I'm using uh, safe bit right on my laptop and um, I drop my laptop in a lake mm -hmm. the split key thing is that I mean how will I how will I be able to recover it the, the thing is backed up on the server but I have to have a backup of my password somewhere is that right right Right, so you would have um, probably a paper backup because that's you know low tech is always the safest, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> as I found out. Um, so uh, I'm I'm a big uh, proponent of paper wallet backups, but you could have it backed up on a USB key or something like that. And if you dropped your uh, laptop in the lake, it would be no problem. You just uh, install a new computer, you'd uh, set up the client again, reauthorize it, uh, reconnect to the server, and you'd be ready to go again. Um, what's more interesting though is let's say somebody steals your laptop. Right, mm -hmm. and it's not just that your your laptop is password protected or your wallet is encrypted or whatever. Um, even if they, uh, let's say, they install a Trojan, they have complete control of your laptop and they give it back to you and they wait for you to enter your password so they can they can look it up. Okay. Even that wouldn't give you give them access to your money because um, there's the extra channel where you can where you get another verification, for example, via SMS. So even if your computer is completely hacked and completely owned and you can't trust it at all. Um, your money is still, stay, still safe because the server does extra verification steps for these um, high security split key accounts. So the server is doing right. two-factor authentication. That's what I was actually talking to Ed about on the way in today. Where I was saying the one weakness is going to be they, what they really need is two-factor authentication and that's exactly what you're talking about. So can, could it be, I mean, so you're talking about like the server could do SMS verification, things like that. Could you also implement something with like a, a physical, like a UB key, USB key, or some other kind right. of two-factor authentication? It's up to the server yes. side, right? Yes, of course. Um, so whatever the server side wants to implement, they can. Um, one of the things with the UB key is the UB key can't protect you from fake transaction information. So if your computer really is hacked, and it says, you know, you're going to send, you know, 10 bitcoins to your grandma, but in reality it's sending 2,000 bitcoins to, you know, some Russian scammer, then, you know, the display has to be correct. So if the scammer is able to control your display, uh, then a YubiKey won't do you any good. Whereas with the SMS verification, 
if you get an SMS back and you can read in the SMS what the transaction details are. So if it says in the SMS, you know, 1,000 bitcoins to a Russian scammer, then you just don't enter the verification code because uh, you notice that the, the verification details are wrong. Wow. They yeah, they yeah, we'll implement uh, security features based on our testing and we'll see basically what, what the users are wanting mm. and uh, what are the stability. One of those features are going to be the iron key that is extremely encrypted, uh, extremely hard to hack. Uh, uh, this con key that you can use uh, and you can store, save it on it, and we can back up, back it up. Even if you lost it, the next day you can get a new one. Uh, we call it Bitcoin safe and secure. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> there was actually there was actually a talk uh, just this weekend at the uh, Prague conference by Clemens Kapp, who's a professor in Germany. And what they've done is they've developed an open source hardware device which includes a display and enough um, uh, CPU power to actually do uh, cryptography on it. Um, so what you could do with that is you could actually have your keys stored on a hardware device. And, uh, of course, it's very easy for clients to support that. So you can probably uh, going to be able to use that with most clients. And obviously, again, we want to be one of the first to support that. So we definitely have an eye on that as well, um, where you have just a hardware authenticator. And then the hardware authenticator has a display that is very secure and, and you can trust it. Wow. Okay. So if I install this uh, app right now, if I install the, this version of SafeBit right now, and I, um, it, do I need to install the official client first? Or yes. can I, if I install it now without the official client, will it create its own wallet? No. No, it just won't connect and it will show you an extra screen. Basically, it will show you, uh, it won't show you anything. It won't show you anything. Okay. <laughs> so right now you have to have the official client installed first and then you can install SafeBit for the GUI. When, uh, when is the next version going to be available that's going to have its own wallet and actually connect to the server? Well, it's oh, like hard to commit to deadlines, but uh, I'll, I'll give this question to you. I like said earlier, again, I, I don't want to commit to deadlines as well, but we're aiming to bring it a bit as soon as possible to the clients uh, and to Bitcoin users. A lot of people are uh, wanting to see this alive. Um, I'm hoping that by uh, by the end of uh, the first quarter, 2012, it will be out there, at least in a better version. By the end of the right. first quarter, 2012. Okay. And and I want to add that uh, the server site for Bitcoin Jazz is is fairly stable. So you remember the New York conference, obviously. Right. And uh, during the New York conference on Saturday, I actually started the first uh, you know permanent Bitcoin Jazz exit node server at exit.truecoin.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, that server has since then been running without any problems, without any crashes. Um, I've updated it a few times, so I had to restart it. But other than that, it hasn't crashed on its own. It's just been running perfectly. So um, that was actually unexpected. So I didn't think that the, the first version was, was going to be this stable. But it looks that um, the Bitcoin Jet server is, is pretty much ready to go. So I can focus fully on helping uh, include the uh, client-side libraries uh, that communicate with the server with the UI that he's built. Great. So uh, the the current in this current uh, uh, preview version is it communicating with the server right now at all or no? No, the current version is just a UI preview. Okay, so it's just a preview of how the UI is going to look. Okay. And but it's functional. So you, if you run the original client and you're you know a little bit technically inclined, you can probably get it to work. Right. Um, we'll definitely come back uh, on the show as soon as we have uh, you know the final thing um, that works yeah. perfectly out of the box. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is exciting. So, all right. Um, for those of you who are watching us live right now, um, you can actually send questions. Uh, if you have any questions for uh, for Ellie or Stefan, send an SMS text message to uh, US number plus one six four six five eight zero 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 nine nine. You'll see it right there on the screen. Uh, or send an email. You can do that. We'll get it instantly here, and we can ask them the questions uh, to feedback at onlyonetv.com. Feedback at onlyonetv.com, all spelled out. All right. So uh, let me take a break really quick and thank our sponsors who are bringing us to you. Uh, every day. Thank, we, we're so appreciative of uh, Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox, obviously, everyone knows the, the uh, number one Bitcoin exchange online. You can, do, you can buy Bitcoin, sell Bitcoins, transact Bitcoin transactions. You can even use it as an e-wallet. There's so many things. We, Mt. Gox is the, the ones with the two-factor authentication of the YubiKey we were mentioning earlier. Um, but they have been around the longest and obviously um, the most famous 
uh, leader in Bitcoin exchanges online. So if you want to buy Bitcoins without leaving your home, just go to mtgox.com. We call it Mt. Gox or mtgox.com. And uh, they deal in mo more than 16 currencies. They have some major announcements coming up here. As you go to mtgox.com, you'll see a countdown timer. Uh, all kinds of great things happening there. And so we're very appreciative of Mt. Gox. And Speaking of thanking, thank you, Economy Book. Um, best-selling author, New York Times best-selling author, Gary Vaynerchuk is, has a second book out called The Thank You Economy, which is all about social media, using uh, these new technologies and social media like Twitter and Facebook and all that to increase your business and to bring your business back to the days of like your grandparents had, the customer service they had with the corner store. You, uh, everybody kind of knows intuitively if you're in business or an entrepreneur or building a brand of any kind that you can leverage social media to bring business to your, you know, to your enterprise. But I say 95% at least are doing it all wrong. And then people receive it as, as spam and they're annoyed and it's, it's just all bad. So you don't want that. This is the Bible on how to do it right so that you can, instead of just selling stuff, you can actually build relationships. And uh, so anyway, check it out. It's uh, thankyoeconomybook.com is where you can learn all about it. Thankyoeconomybook.com. And the book is called The Thank You Economy by Gary Vaynerchuk. And MemoryDealers.com, MemoryDealers.com, uh, we call it uh, uh, Roger Ver, Bitcoin Jesus. He is the owner of uh, MemoryDealers.com. They're famous, they have, uh, besides being Bitcoin evangelists, they are one of the largest online retailers that accept Bitcoin and they sell physical Bitcoin too. But their main business is, they have the largest inventory, one of the largest inventories in the world of fiber optic networking devices, switches, routers, anything you can do with having to do with networking, infrastructure, hardware, memory, you name it, even mining equipment, uh, graphics cards and all that stuff. So check it out, memorydealers.com. All right. So uh, yeah, as I said, live viewers, uh, send an SMS to 646-580-0099. You'll see it right there. Or feedback at onlyonetv.com. And um, so, all right. So the official client is going to have this, uh, what do you call it, split key? Is that what it's called? By February? Uh, yeah, split key is the, the general term. Okay. Now, the split key, is that, um, to make sure I understand, is that the actual private key that's split, or is it the password to access the wallet that's split? It's the actual key. The actual keys are actually split. So it's almost like taking your wallet file and, ta and slicing it right down the middle, like, like right. those old, what are, what are those, like hearts or something like that? So half a coin. So, you, so I get half of the, the private keys and the other half are actually stored on the server? Exactly. And then nobody can access it at all without both? Yes. All right. Exactly, yeah. So how, okay, how do I, um, if I lose my laptop, like in the analogy where I, dr I accidentally drop my laptop over the bridge and it's in the lake, um, how does the other half of the private keys get restored? Right, so the, um, we always think of loss and sort of uh, theft as two different scenarios. And the split key idea is something that protects very, very efficiently against theft. So you would have to have some sort of um, backup solution independent of the split key solution. But the split key solution is designed to do is to make your Bitcoins very accessible so you can use them whenever you want and very easily and without a lot of hassle. But at the same time, a hacker can't just uh, take control of one of your devices and then spend all your coins. So uh, it, it's designed to, have, to give you usability and protection against theft. And then backups is a completely separate issue where you can use paper backups or USB backups, whatever you want. Um, you can uh, back up both, key, both halves of the key in the same place or you can back them up in different places, you know, if you're really paranoid. Um, but, uh, and you can make as many copies as you want, and you can back them up any way you want. So it's, it has nothing to do with backups. It's all the backups uh, methodologies are still available, and there's still better ones uh, being developed. Um, but what this does is it really makes it easy, and you don't have to have any hardware um, in order to have secure verification for your uh, transactions, and you don't, you don't get your Bitcoin stolen. I just want to know that uh, we're also developing backup solutions for Bitcoins, uh, be it the split key or just your uh, private keys in other form. Uh, so that will be a service that comes from Paybit as well, at some point. 
So when you, okay, once this is all impl implemented and the split keys and all that, and then you have half on the server, half on your machine, you still have to do backups because you, you have to have both or you lose the access to it. Um, right. Are you going to recommend, yeah. what would you recommend for the average user? Are they going to be backing up, for example, if they back it up to paper, are they backing up only their half of the private keys or would they back up both? So, I mean, everybody right now has a different vision. So if you ask Ali, he'll probably tell you something slightly different. But um, the way I picture it is um, the client-side keys, you just print them out. And the server-side keys, you get in the mail. And then you have two pieces of paper, and you just store them any way you like. Uh, um, and, and to me, that's, that's the simplest solution. It's very low-tech. It's just a piece yeah. of paper, right? And you can put it in your safe, or you can, you know, store one with your grandma and one with your brother, or whatever. And mm -hmm. so, you know, not neither of them can spend your points necessarily. So it's 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 really neat. The, the split key really helps you even with the backing up. Um, mm -hmm. And you can make as many copies of them as you want. There's nothing stopping you from doing it. Um, okay. So it's it's kind of a nice way to to have um, a little bit more security. So um, mm -hmm. any place that you would consider secure for a backup right now. Mm -hmm. You can use the same thing for for these split keys as well, except you have the additional benefit of, let's say you don't trust your safety deposit box entirely, so you just put one half of the keys in there, and you put the other half in your safe at home or, or with friends or whatever. Okay. And you might have to have, I mean, if you don't trust, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. If you don't trust your safety deposit box, you... You, it, there's different kinds of trust because like you, you, you might only store half of them there, but you also need to have that same thing backed up somewhere else. So it's not only that someone might get access to them, but you might lose access to them. They're two different scenarios sure. of everything, right? If you, you don't right. want to lose your only access, even if it is to half, because <laughs> you still need both halves to make the whole. Okay, now, now on a day-to-day -day basis, when you're using this you know, to send and receive transactions, do you, uh, it, let's say in the future when you have the split key thing, right? Um, obviously, those keys have to come together to, to make a transaction. So is the, private, is the other half of the private key from the server coming down to your local client, or is my half going up to the server? Where, does the tr where do they get married before the transaction happens? So it really depends on which um, model you use. So there's different approaches to the split key uh, algorithm. Um, the way uh, it's going to be implemented in the original client is you have two separate keys, and it really doesn't matter who signs first. It's like, you know, a check, it requires two signatures. It doesn't really matter who signs it first. It's just, at the end of the day, there has to be both signatures on there. Um, so clients probably would sign on the client side first, then submit it to the server, and then the server would uh, pr uh, do the final signature and then publish it. The only, the only reason it might make a difference is for security if my... If the machine was vulnerable, um, any time, if the machine had a virus, for example, and any time the, the entire key was assembled together on that machine, that would be a, a vulnerable time when it could be captured, right? Exactly. That's, that's what we want to avoid. We want to never have the full key on any computer, be it the client or the server or your mobile device or any, any device at all. Um, the whole security comes from the fact that you can separately sign in different places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you sign separately, but then, I mean, in order to actually spend it or make a transaction, they have to come together, even if it's just for a moment of that transaction. No, no, no not at all. Um, so imagine, imagine the situation. So let me give you a metaphor, right? Um, so you have, this, you have this check, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to spend a lot of money from your business account, right? So it requires two signatures. Mm -hmm. So what you'll do is you'll put the first signature on it, you'll fill out all the checking, the, the check details, you know, the, the uh, rec recipient and the amount and everything. The check is fully filled out. The only thing that's missing is um, the second signature, right? Right. So um, you've already signed yours and you then hand it over to your partner and he'll look at it over. He'll see, um, is the recipient right? Yes. It's, is the amount right? Yes. And then he'll just put down the final signature as well. And now the, sec uh, the check has both signatures and now it's valid. And that's exactly how it works with Bitcoin. So um, the transaction needs both signatures to be valid. So you'll check the transaction, you'll put in your client signature, you'll submit it to the server, and the server will use some method, like an SMS, for example, SMS verification, mm -hmm. or you know, they might call you, or they might send you a fax, or who the hell knows. It mm -hmm. really is up to the server. Um, but, but when they verify that you indeed want to make this transaction, then they'll put down the second signature as well, and then they'll publish it. Okay, well maybe, maybe I'm splitting hairs, but tell me if, the, if, I'm, if I'm wrong. 
or off base or what. But the, okay, if the, so you got the client and the server be, being two separate uh, partners in a, in, a, in, a, in a checking account that requires two signatures, right? And then the yeah. blockchain is the actual ledger, the actual banking system, we'll say. So right. the, if the client has to sign it and then sends it to the server, for that moment, the server then has both signatures. Like your partner, now he has your signature, he sees your signature, and then he has right. his own. Right. But what but you're saying is they actually sign them separately and they submit them to the blockchain separately? Right, no, 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 no. But if, uh, remember that a signature, especially a cryptographic signature, is only valid for what it's signing. So yes, the server sees your signature, but it's only valid for this particular check, which you've already uh, you know, signed and you already said that you want to make this transaction happen. Mm -hmm. So the server, yes, they see your signature, but that doesn't mean that they can just co copy and paste it over to a different transaction. Okay. So now I think we're getting to the core of it that I'm finally going to understand. So what you're saying is that this split key transaction stuff that's going to be coming out in February, by February, that's a fundamental imp change to the Bitcoin network, the way transactions are processed on the Bitcoin network? Yes? Right. I mean, depending on how you look at it, right? Uh, Ellie, maybe you want to explain that. <laughs> I see an, uh, one head nodding <laughs> yes and one head nodding no. So <laughs> Uh, Gavin's approach is, uh, like Stefan said, is basically changing the Bitcoin net uh, protocol, basically adding a new feature to it. Uh, Stefan's approach is a bit more uh, conservative and it's basically creating uh, something that, uh, that is outside of the Bitcoin network and just communicating between the two clients and creating uh, the private keys, the uh, first signature and the other signature uh, separately without the ever involving uh, the Bitcoin protocol, only just generating the two different signatures separately. So my, um, I'm, I'm going towards Stefan's idea because I prefer not to change the Bitcoin uh, protocol, but uh, who knows, we'll see how, how it goes and from there. So is it, I mean, is this ability already uh, built into the Bitcoin protocol? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. So. There's, there's two approaches, okay? So one involves changing the Bitcoin network and one doesn't. Ah. And Gavin right now is working on the one where you have to add some new features to the Bitcoin network to make it work well. Mm -hmm. um, and I have developed one that's sort of outside of the network and it just uses some fancy cryptography in order to make it work. Ah. And so both aren't finished yet. The one that's going to be in the network is hopefully coming out in February. Mine is hopefully coming out somewhere around that time as well. And then, you know, it really depends on which one's going to be better. I'm not <laughs> particularly invested in either one, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to make mine the best, uh, the best that I can make it, and then really what the experts decide uh, will be the one that everyone uses, I think. And it really doesn't matter. They both do the sa similar thing. Yeah, I mean, we just want the feature, right? We, we yeah. don't care who provides it. It's all open source anyway. I'm not, I don't make any money if, if they use my algorithm. It's just, right. you know... As long as I have the feature, it's also my Bitcoins on the line, so... <laughs> yeah. Are there any other, like, side benefits? Like, for example, of comparing one, you know, your method versus the, you know, official client's method or whatever. Uh, are there any advantages? Like, for example, could I do a three-party transaction? Could I do a five or three out of five have to sign it? Things like that. Is that does one method have a, an advantage over the other in, in additional possible features? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you could, I could talk the whole evening, but uh, uh, basically my method, I think, is a little more difficult to get right and to finalize and to test and all that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's probably, uh, it's probably, yeah, it's more difficult. It's just more difficult to implement. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, Gavin's method has a disadvantage that um, it creates a lot more data to be stored in the blockchain. So with mm -hmm. my method, you, for one transaction, you have one public key and one signature to be stored. Whereas with... Um, the original client's method that they're working on is they have to store every single signature. So if you have a, a check with five signatures, they have to store five signatures. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that in the very long run, so when we really have a lot of cryptographers interested in Bitcoin and Bitcoin is maybe getting a little bit more mainstream, uh, I think that my method will be more efficient. But mm -hmm. in the short term, it's probably, um, it's probably simpler to use um, the Bitcoin client scripting language and the stuff that Gavin's working on. Mm hmm okay so in any case one way or the other it's definitely going to happen <laughs> it's just a matter of of uh, the experts deciding which which is a better right, so strategy 
these are the the technical details, right? Yeah, so this is the, the guy behind the current. You don't have to worry about this. We'll figure don't something worry about out. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what Bank of America and Citibank said. Don't worry about that. Wall Street. <laughs> don't worry about that. Those are just derivatives. Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> that's the difference with Bitcoin. With Bitcoin, if you want to know what's going on, you can at least find out. Yes, that's right. You can get you can go as deep as you want down that exactly. rabbit hole. <laughs> okay. Well, this is really cool. So. Um, and is that, uh, do you see that, all of that, is it what you're talking about is going to be included in this next version that you're talking about, first quarter or whatever of 2012? Yeah, I'm sorry. We won't commit at this uh, point, but most probably yes. Most probably yes. Okay, cool. Now, do you have any other people helping you on this project, or is it just the two of you? Uh, yeah, we're currently, uh, we're just started with the, uh, getting the first initial investment and we started uh, recruiting the more developers and we have a few advisors uh, on various topics. So yeah, they've been growing uh, rapidly, I could say. Okay, so you're recruiting anybody, um, volunteers or are you actually hiring people? Hiring. Hiring. Okay, so that, that leads to yeah. my next question. So the, the, you're, you're viewing this as a business, as a, as a, as a business. So um, you're looking for investors, you're hiring. Um, how, what's the business model? How are you going to, if this is free open source software, what's the business model? Um, most likely we'll be using uh, additional services like the backup, like uh, more extreme security, um, some kind of a DNS system that we're looking at right now, um, and more features to save this uh, one way or another. You have to charge, eventually you have to charge somebody for something because it's not free to send SMS messages, it's not, I mean not everything is free. So, um, so the, it's services, it's add-on services like that that you'll be able to sell. And also partnerships, Sorry. like partnerships with an exchange site. If there's a preferred exchange site that's built into the app then um, maybe there'll be some kind of a partnership arrangement where you, you get revenue from that too? Yeah, um, well, uh, Bitcoin Exchange is one of the uh, revenue generating uh, products that I think will be inside data as soon as we release a uh, more stable version. Uh, but that's just one of them. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like there's many, many so, different opportunities. What about point of sale? Is there anything specific about this that, I mean, obviously just receiving uh, Bitcoin payments on any kind of device across the board seems like that would be an ideal way for a small business at least to uh, get set up accepting Bitcoin point of sale instantly, right? Yeah, from a Bitcoin Jazz's site, we've already um, worked uh, pretty closely with BitPay. So um, I, I could definitely see uh, myself creating a, a contact between Ellie and, uh, and Tony and uh, Stefan. And you're talking about bit-pay.com. I always, exactly. it, it's called BitPay, but, I, but you have to put, if you're going to check it, it out, it's bit-pay.com. Uh, right what? <laughs> it definitely has my stamp of approval for what it's worth. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So that really works well. Okay, cool. And also, if you end up partnering with one of the exchanges, like if you end up partnering with Mt. Gox, for example, they have point of sale stuff like vouchers and all kinds of, uh, they're actually developing point of sale hardware, all sorts of things. So um, it, it, it's all going to integrate one way or the other. Like you said, right. it, it really doesn't matter, you know, well, I mean, it matters, but um, we know for sure that it's going to happen. It's just the best one is going to get flushed out and rise to the top, whatever the best solution, the easiest, best way to do it. And that all these options that there are so many that everybody's working on is just uh, makes it obvious that it's, there's going to be some real major uh, improvements in the ease of use and security and all these things. It's really exciting. That's so, what we're hoping for. Yeah. So first quarter, that's the that's the all we can narrow we can we can nail you down to, huh? Does it depend on how many how many investors you get contacting you? <laughs> uh, not really. Not at this point. Uh, we're currently already closing uh, the the first round and talking with uh, more investors on the second round. Uh, we're still hoping for offers, obviously, but um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Okay. And it's not going to be related. Is the company called oh, Bitsafe? Is that the name of the company? Um, the company is not incorporated yet, but most likely, yes, will be called SafeBit. Okay, SafeBit. I said I said it wrong. SafeBit. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm continuously amazed at your ability to say uh, brand names from, but I guess it's just so many, huh? There's so many. I, mean, I just can't believe it. I keep saying BitSafe, but it's SafeBit. Yeah. Um, you can remember it's Italian. It's Italian with the dot .it, right? SafeB.it. <laughs> Safe bit. I know there's so many, and they all they all they all have a bit in there somewhere. But yeah, I just uh, came I just came back from the Prague conference, and I still you know I'm still my head is floating with all the different names and brands and people that I've met. It's uh, pretty crazy. Yeah, how was that? I heard Max Kaiser was one of the speakers. Yes, he did. Uh, he did both a talk and also he uh, he led a uh, a panel um, where they were talking about uh, the future of money. Um, there were a couple interesting talks. Uh, what, what, what I thought was interesting was that there were a few talks that were uh, critical of Bitcoin. So there, um, there were both speakers from a technical point of view for Bitcoin. Um, then there was Rick Falkwinge and uh, Max Kaiser, who were sort of evangelizing for Bitcoin from a more non-technical perspective. Mm -hmm. um, then there was David Birch, who was um, sort of from a payments perspective. So he worked with MasterCard, and he's working with um, Transport for London, who, who've got these little Oyster cards. They're very uh, convenient. And so they all brought very different viewpoints sort of to the table and um, the basic narrative that uh, that came out at the end was that Bitcoin is actually um, everybody agrees that the base technology is really good and now everyone's looking to client developers to make better clients because it needs to be really usable right now my grandma can't use it you know she right. just can't right. and um, until we get to that point where she can use it and uh, uh, safely without it you know getting stolen or whatnot um, that's going to be a very, very hard and uh, long road, and it's probably going to take years. But mm -hmm. um, we have to start now, and we have to we have to do it quickly because um, you know the need for Bitcoin is definitely there. Exactly. And we had yesterday we had uh, Ben Wallace who wrote the article for Wired Magazine, which is out on the newsstands right now, December issue of Wired Magazine, which you can also get online. And uh, I was just rereading the article um, for the second time, and I was reading about you, Stefan. And, you know, and I was actually on, this morning on the way in, I was reading it again. And um, I saw the, dis you know, talking about you, and I was like, you know, th this is exactly what happened. When you had, um, you know, we've all had been, I think pretty much everybody's been hurt one way or the other. We've stumbled and tripped and, you know, and, and, you're, and lost Bitcoins in the process. Um, one of the guys um, talked about, he was an early adopter and he got into Bitcoin when it was uh, less than half a cent or something like that. And I said, please tell me that you bought a lot of Bitcoin, right? And he goes, yeah, I did. He, I, he goes, I bought like $200 worth. And I'm like, okay, please tell me you still have them. And he says, no, he was so excited when they doubled in value and it was worth a whole cent that he sold them, you know. So <laughs> there's that. And then there's super technical people like you, Stefan, who have, you know, just one little slip up and boom, you know, wiped them out. And people like me yeah. that are just idiots and trust the wrong banker, e-wallet, you know, and then they disappear and take all your money. So anyway, all of these things... I believe there's a reason for that happening. I think that it's obviously it's made uh, made me really devout about security and and you know know your banker or or don't have a banker your, at all you know and no you know tr basically trust cryptography and free open source software more than any people including yourself and for you Stefan I mean this must have really uh, kind of em emboldened you to. Um, kind of evangelize and say, okay, I'm going to fix this problem so that this what happened to me doesn't happen to other people. Yeah, and you know, your viewers probably remember me from uh, when I was on your show before, and I was uh, pretty excited about uh, Webcoin. And one of the reasons that even though Webcoin was very close to being finished, I eventually um, stopped the development was because they couldn't solve um, the fundamental security issue with it, and that is that the client code itself is still served by the server. Right. Mm -hmm. So whenever you have something that runs in a browser, you know, ultimately the code is still served by the server, and you're still in the same sort of dilemma that you are in with, you know, PayPal or my Bitcoin, where the server just has full access to your money, and if they want to cut you off or you, they want to just go away or steal your money, they right. can do it. And uh, it was only very recently that I actually figured out a way to get around that. It was what my uh, talk in Prague was about. So hopefully you'll be able to to see that as a video pretty soon. But mm -hmm. um, there's different approaches, so I definitely am interested in finishing Webcoin, but I'm even more excited about SafeBit because it's just so much more usable, and uh, I'm really hoping that we can make SafeBit a really, really good client. Now, SafeBit is um, the uh, when you okay that brings up a point. So this the code is not served by the server. I mean, well, you download it first. You download it into 
do you download it into your browser or you download the code actually to your PC? Or where does the code live for the client? Uh, the code lives actually on your, uh, on your hard drive. But uh, Google is doing a pretty good job of making sure that it's not uh, compromised in any way. That's why we chose uh, uh, Google Chrome Web Store uh, for the initial uh, preview version. So that I don't think to be worried about compromised code and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not, it's not really a web app, even though, I mean, I, I think of Chrome, like a no. Chrome store as a web app store, but it's not a web app. It actually just downloads, the, it's an app store that downloads the app to your local machine. Exactly. It's, it's, like, it's web technologies, but it's deployed in different ways. So on a mobile okay. phone, it could still be a native app. It's just in the inside, there's web technologies running. Okay. Okay. Exactly. All right, cool. So the app is actually installed on your local machine. And, d I mean... It's independent of the platform, so it doesn't matter if I'm running Windows or Ubuntu Linux or Mac. It's it's as long as I have Chrome, it's a local app and it's going to run through Chrome. Right. right. Platform independent. That is really slick. Okay, cool. This is the future for sure. You guys are right on the cutting edge of it. <laughs> so exciting. Well, but, but you got to hurry though. I want it. I want it before the end of February. <laughs> it's got to be done, right? It's like Hurry. we're playing with financial software, so it's got to be 100% rock solid, and you can't release it a day too soon. Yeah. I agree. Okay, cool. Is it, so is there anything else you want to tell people um, about, about um, you know, SafeBit, uh, Bitcoin in general? I would love if people followed us on, on uh, Twitter, on Bitcoin Jazz. Uh, there's a lot of technical tweets, but, you know, I try to, to mix in a little bit of news if anybody is using Bitcoin Jazz or if they're developing clients and so on. If there's anything cool coming out that has anything to do with, with what I'm doing, uh, you can find it on my Twitter, Bitcoin okay. Jazz. Your twi and it's, what is your Twitter again? Just Bitcoin JS. Bitcoin JS. So it's uh, on Twitter, obviously. It's twitter.com slash Bitcoin J like John, S like Sam, right? Bitcoin exactly. JS. Right? Got it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Ellie, how about you? Do you have a Twitter? Do you tweet? Um, yeah, I have a Twitter. Uh, Ellie Sklar, P L I S K L A R. Uh, you're welcome to follow me. Um, it's not just Bitcoin related there. So okay. <laughs> so it's at E L I S K L A R, right? Exactly. Got it. Okay, cool. All right, we'll, we'll be following you guys. We have to do this again. You've you, you got to let me know as soon as you got something to announce, and uh, we'll have you okay. back, and uh, yeah, you can tell the world about it. Okay. We so appreciate you taking your time from Israel and yeah. Switzerland Likewise. all over the place. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Bruce. <laughs> yes, absolutely. My pleasure. All right. It's a, it's a mutual adoration society here. We all love each other. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Thank and you. thanks for joining Thank us. You. <laughs> All right. Take care. We'll see you next time on Bye. the Bitcoin Show.